family and this is painful hilarity I actually just stopped making the video that I was making I just was not feeling it it was not coming off the way I wanted to so I'm just going to do a chit chat video and not do the video that I had planned I have had a really really rough week both physically and emotionally and I just wanted to check in with you guys so I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about what's been going on and whatever's on my brain I'm gonna talk about right now so I got a new therapist which is super exciting because I have been looking for a therapist for a few years now where I live is very difficult because it is very far away from everything I kind of just have been looking and it's just it's been really intimidating and I have seen a lot of therapists in my day but I have not seen that many therapists chronically ill I just was getting really scared about it and so I kind of have like my online community and I forget exactly how it happened but I do know that I asked someone like online techie people and I had been hearing that there were therapists that did like Skype calls and I was like what what like that would be amazing that means like I would not have to feel good and worry about puking in some therapist's office that would be amazing and someone got back to me saying oh they use this app or service called Talkspace and I was like well, what's that so I looked into it and I downloaded the app and there's a person that comes on and they're a counselor so everything's anonymous that you say to them and you kind of just talk to them about what you're looking for in therapy ask them I mean I ask them a billion questions like how do you know these people are certified and like how do I know this is legit like seems kind of not legit like this is scary and and then like questions of cost and yada 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 I started this kind of a uh, not kind of November 6th of last year so that lets you know how much research I do in things before I actually go through with them yeah I have some commitment issues <laughs> uh, finally once you decide you're gonna take the leap I think you pay and then and there's like different plans you can do I did the cheapest one because I was like well I want to see if this works out and the cheapest one is unlimited texting and a complimentary like meet-and-greet kind of with your therapist I, you can do it video or audio I would prefer to do video but people that don't if you don't want to do that I guess if that like freaks them out or something then you can just do audio and then you can send little like audio memos as well in the chat and so once you pay then she sends you three people that she thinks are going to be a good match for you now they are licensed in the state that you live in and are going to be receiving your therapy in so that there are laws that can be abided by <laughs> so i didn't i they were great matches that she gave me i just didn't feel like it was meshing well with what i want to work on because they tell you like what they're licensed in their license numbers and then what their focus is and then also what treatment plans and treatment styles that they use and I just didn't feel like they really like lined up like with my counselor I was like um like we're not on the same page here because what are you talking about because one of them was like family therapy and like teen and adolescence and I was like um, did she ever get who she was talking to? But anyways, it was just one, and I'm sure she was a great counselor. And she, they, the first three did have, like, probably the highest credentials, and I was, like, kind of talking a lot about that. So I can kind of understand why she did that. But anyways, so I went through that a few times <laughs> because I just really wanted a good fit, even though they make it very easy to switch therapists to a different person if you don't mesh with them and so because I feel like that's very important when seeing a counselor I just I don't know I just like I found this one woman and I just I was like you know what this one's gonna be the one that I'm gonna give a try I can't just keep on like going through people or else I'm gonna run out of people in the state of North Carolina <laughs> 
we just have these things that are so cool that are like in common not like necessarily personally but just like in life and um, she seems like a really sweet and open and honest person and treats me as a peer and like she just kind of checks off all of the boxes of what I was asking for and just communicating with her and with my other counselor and um, it's just really freaking cool man like I like three o'clock in the morning when I can't sleep but my brain is like <laughs> like going crazy I can leave her a voice memo of what I'm thinking about or what's going on or what I'm worrying about or what I'm crying about and then the next morning she'll get back to me and that just kind of blows my mind because in my universe the next morning it is gone like it is gone like I will never remember what I was I don't even remember what I was thinking about like five seconds ago let alone freaking last night are you kidding me yeah it's just really cool and I'm really enjoying it so far and if it works out then next month I think I'll probably um, go up to like the most expensive compared to paying out of pocket somewhere else it's not I mean at like a regular place it's I think I've in my own personal experience it's cheaper so and you're not spending any gas and I can literally sit in my room and talk to her so I think that's really really cool um, especially with my social anxiety and just my really bad anxiety right now uh, so that's been going on um, this last past week I had three intense intense pain days um, some of the most intense pain I've had in quite a while um, not sure really what was, was going on there uh, I was a little bit worried um, just because it was so bad and usually I'll have intense ba pain for like a day and then just kind of like chill out on everything and then it'll just you know just go back to like you know the normal pain which is so much better but no it is so much better than the intense pain but then on my fourth day I kind of was in like moderate to severe pain so it started to chill out which was great because I was starting to lose my freaking mind it was like one of those I was just at the end of my rope like I was really just about to lose it like I was just like when is this gonna stop because no matter how long you've been sick like I think there's always this like panic that's kind of in just instinctual in your brain because I know for me I can't control it and it just is like this is gonna last forever like this is a little brain like thing like little voice in your brain just screaming like this is going to be your life now and um and then the rational brain in me is like this is going to end this is going to end this is just what's going on right now <laughs> so um like nothing was touching it like heat like medicines meditation like nothing was touching this pain so it was really rough and exhausting and it's taken a lot out of me and then I got sick two days after that um, just like a stomach bug and so every time I talk about getting sick like I just get so angry and I actually just saw this like on a one of my one of my groups that I'm like that I like their page on like the mighty or something on Facebook but they just did like what a normal person being sick is like and what person that has chronic illness and then is sick on top of that is like and I was just like thank you because I get so worked up because I'm like it's not like I just got sick like it's sick on top of being sick like can you please understand that um but no people generally can't <laughs> but yeah I just it's just been really rough and things have just been kind of stressful and um, but I guess like nothing really big is happening I'm trying to find a psychiatrist right now because my psychiatrist um, retired and so that has probably been the most stressful thing in my life um, because I have been seeing him for the past eight years and I have been on medication that I'm on right now for the past decade plus so 
but I live in North Carolina and they are going freaking ham on all of the laws for every type of psychiatric medication. So I am terrified that the, this next doctor I find is not going to want to prescribe me what I need and um, what I've been prescribed for the past 12 years. So <laughs> that's always a fun fact to just have running around rampant in your irrational brain. Uh, but no, I'm hopeful as well, but it's a lot of money to just like throw down and have them not work out. Like here's like for a 15 minute appointment, here's a couple hundred bucks for you to say, no, I'm not prescribing you the medications that you want because I can't exactly call around and be like, would you prescribe me this? Would you prescribe me this? Even though I'm an honest person, I have a diagnosis, I have a history of being very compliant with what I'm taking and seeing my doctors when they want me to, taking my medication as directed. And I understand so many of you guys understand this struggle of being labeled a drug addict even though we are being responsible with our medications. But they do have to err on being cautious and I also understand that aspect of it. But it is really frustrating when you have such a long history and have proved yourself to be trustworthy and you're still getting treatment as like a potential red flagger and I really just want to call people and be like is this what I'm going to get because I'm going to be paying you for a service and I want to know if this is part of your service it's not like I'm gonna be like oh if I call you and say like oh do you prescribe opioids you have and you say yes you have to prescribe me opioids like why can't you just say that is something that we offer or that's something that is a possibility and then write it down on my check like chart and be like oh she might be a drug seeker but like I don't know I just don't and like why do you even have to do that I don't know it's just really frustrating and it's just kind of like I feel like I'm in like class and I'm that person that like does my homework every single day gets straight A pluses and I'm like constantly raising my hands to answer a question and the teacher is just picking on the like class clown always and is kind of labeling me like or like the kid next to me is a jerk and is always like talking during class and she's like constantly calling me out and saying like Emily why are you talking during class go to the principal's office and I'm like I wasn't talking like Dave was talking he's next to me and she's just like no you're talking go to the principal and it's just like what does it mean? Like, I'm a very, like, I'm a really good student and I'm just sitting here listening politely. <sighs> so, and it's just like very stressful for my family in a whole because they know how stressful it is to me because my team is like so close to my heart and I just need my people and they are like my security blanket because I know they get me and they trust me and they, they get it get it and they understand it and I just need that so yeah I just really hope that I can find someone and not go completely bankrupt and have to like sell my soul to the devil <laughs> to be able to afford to find a therapist or I mean a psychiatrist that I really like but I am very lucky so far because out of the two things that I needed to find a therapist and a psychiatrist like I think I really really met a good match with my therapist so I'm very happy about that as far as anything else that I can think of the only thing I can think of is Jack's update and he is getting big you know I'm gonna go get him here he is he is 5.6 pounds now he's a big boy and he was sleeping so I'm sorry Jack I actually call him Monkey. I spent like ages and ages and ages picking the perfect name and like harassing everyone I know to find the right name and I don't even call him by it. I just call him Monkey. He's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, so he's a big boy. He's a big boy and he's really good. He's still insane, but the teething has gotten a lot better. He just teases more like um, cause his molars in the back are coming in, like he'll do this, he bites back there. So, um, but he's gonna be big. Um, 
she says she never knows what, what size they're gonna be. Like they could be a teacup, which is like two pounds. Um, but he's gonna be a big boy because he's already almost Bella size. What, well, honey? <laughs> I just looked at Bella. Oh, you can see her a little bit. I just looked like looked at Bella and she was like. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So he's already almost like very close to Bella's uh, weight, and he's still bigger than her and he's only four months old <laughs> so he still has at least he has a lot of growing still so he's gonna be a big puppy he could be like a full toy which would be a nightmare for me but you know you just go with what you have right Mikey say hi to everyone I just love his fur so much, or hair, whatever. But he is so cute. I, if I haven't, if you haven't seen Jax before, he's a red toy poodle, um, and he is adorable. His, but um, I just cut his body hair um, because he literally was like three times the size. <laughs> he had so much hair. And I finally just cut it, so now he's like actually like dog shaped, which is nice because before he was just like volleyball shaped. Um, but yeah, he's a really oh, he just is yawning. Um, but yeah, he wants to go back to bed, so we're gonna say goodbye now. Yeah, I want to be big and not belly. I hope you guys are having a pain-free, stress-free day. We are sending out... He likes to spread his legs. X. Double O's. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.